Right. So I got John Dewey and his ideas on pragmatism and experiential education. So first, let's start just by talking about who John Dewey was. Um, he was born in 1859 and he lived until 1952, really long life. Um, he was a philosopher, an educator, and an author. And here's a picture of him with a quote, education is not preparation for life, education is life itself. And we'll talk a little bit um, about how he expanded upon that, starting with his notable works. Um, he had a series of lectures that he turned into a book called The School and Society. And I read this book last winter break. It's pretty short and easy to read. Um, and basically he builds on that idea of school being representative of life itself. Um, essentially he talks about like a cooking class and using the cooking class to foster questions about chemistry and doing that with all sorts of classes that are kind of vocational in nature, like cooking or woodworking and using them as a lens to cover the same curriculum um, that you could in a normal school. In that book, he also talks about the child as being the main focus of what is happening in education, which is a pretty important idea. His next book in 1916 is Democracy in Education. Main claim to fame for this one. If you look on the SOU website on the page about Nigel, this is listed as the one book that everyone should read. And then Experience in Education came later in 1938. And we'll talk about that one a little bit later because it's the basis where he sort of worked out the ideas of experiential education. So getting into pragmatism, this is one of his philosophical ideas. Um, I think that he started um, and certainly was pretty influential um, in getting going. So in order to understand it as a philosophical idea, I think it's important to just start to talk about what it means to be pragmatic in general. For me, being pragmatic just means being realistic. Um, that is, we use approaches that will work in the real world. So it's essentially practical. It's not theoretical because it's based on what will work in the real world. And that gets us pretty close to Dewey's philosophical conception of pragmatism. Basically the concept just holds that if something is true, then it will work in the real world. If you have a theory or an idea and you go to test it in the real world and it does not work, then it must be false. And that is what it means to be pragmatic. If something is true, it'll work in the real world. If it's false, it doesn't. So the relationship of that theory to education is just, say you're taking a theory like something we learned from an education psychologist in cognition and creativity with Nigel. And when you go to apply that theory, like, like a learning style or something like that, and then after your research, you find that it doesn't work in the classroom or the experience of real kids in a real classroom does not confirm the theory, then it can't be true. That's what a pragmatic person would say or a pragmatist according to Dewey's tradition. So experiential education um, is a pretty, pretty cool thing from Dewey. Basically, you start to get this idea that teachers are guides or mentors. Um, he was really critical of the idea that a teacher is like a dominant force who just passes knowledge on um, to students, kind of like that banking model of education where the students are a vessel to be filled up. Um, John Dewey was really opposed to that idea. He thought that knowledge was a social act, um, that knowledge was gained through the experience of the students. And that is where we get into this experiential education part. Basically, educators are supposed to provide an experience for the students and then give them a little bit of time to reflect on the experience, make some generalizations about the experience, and then apply what they learned from that new from that experience to something new, something different. So there's a little model 
Um, basically, you're going to do something, have an experience in the classroom, allow time to reflect with some guiding questions, um, some aid from the teacher to help students reflect on it, and then apply. You're going to generalize um, what happened in that experience and then apply it to something either in everyday life or in another subject. So when I think about the relevance of experiential education for other things in education, the biggest thing that sticks out is how similar it seems um, to constructivism, where you have the teacher as a guide or a mentor, and then basically the knowledge is a social act um, and that we should create experiences where kids can interact with each other and learn throughout that process and then take what they learn and build it and apply it to something new. That seems like the foundation of constructivism to me. And John Dewey, um, when you read his work, it's surprising that he wrote this stuff so long ago because so much of it um, still feels so relevant, still feels so needed um, in education. Um, and he's someone um, that has been super influential and that I would recommend reading. Thank you. And here are my references.